Welcome to today's session. Today we will be talking about the concept of ocean waves and ocean currents. Now, why are waves formed on the ocean? So, waves are ripples that are formed due to wind energy that flows and those can be seen as waves on the oceans. Now, when we talk about wave, let's first understand the characteristics of waves. So, the first thing we will talk about is so this is a general wave that you can see in yellow. So you have this pattern which is known as wave. Now the portion that goes above the line at the highest point is known as crest. The lowest point that a wave can go is known as trough. The distance between two crest or two trough is known as wavelength. So this region is what is known as wavelength. The height is known as amplitude and the time taken to reach from one point to another would be the uh, time period for the wave. Now there are some terminologies that we try to understand by talking about wavelength. The most important is interference. Now there can be two types of interference. One is constructive interference. Another thing is destructive interference. So suppose this is a wave and there is another wave which is similar to this wave and the crest of the two waves meet. So for example, this is the first wave and again this is the second wave. So what is happening here is the crest here and here are coming at the same point of time. So here it would be addition of two crests. So double in the height and double in the depth. So you will have higher crest and deeper troughs. Why? In destructive Interference what happens is you have one wave which has the crest here and you have another wave which has the trough here. So you have the crest and the trough that kinds of cancels out and you have a single wave that runs through. So this is how we understand the wave formations. So constructive waves we can call them as freak waves as freak waves in ocean studies. Okay, so let, let me move on to the next slide. So this is what is the freak wave. So as you can see here, you have numerous waves that are flowing through. Okay, so there are three different waves and when they, they are trying to sum these waves, we can find the waves which are known as freak waves. And these waves, you have higher crest and deeper trough as compared to the remaining three waves. A classic example of the spring wave was the incidence of Queen Mary ship and this ship which was carrying around 15,000 Europeans had a hair size escape otherwise that this could have been a most um, a disaster which was much more severe than Titanic. So this was due to the freak waves that were prevalent in the ocean that time. So there were very high waves. So ship was sup supposedly at this height, and then there was a fault in this height. So with this waves, uh, that was one of the examples that we have for freak waves. Now there are various factors that affect the waves. The various factors include first wind, the most important factor. So the speed or the strength of the wind is the primary factor. If the winds are strong, there would be bigger currents, uh, bigger waves and uh, more strong currents. Then you have factors like duration, how long the wave has been. Okay, and then there are other factors which include the length of the wind, the length of the wave. Okay, so this duration 
is also known as fetch. So these are some of the factors that affect the waves in the ocean. Now there is a very important concept that we need to understand. When we see waves coming in the ocean, it's not the water that is moving, rather it's a kind of wave that is moving and water due to its very flexible nature for its energy transfer is going up with the crest and then it goes down with the trunk. So the water particle here which is shown with this movement just shows a movement that is taking place. It goes up with the crust and then comes down with the trunk. And what is happening is the wave which is here is constantly moving to the coast. Now what happens as you go closer to the coast is the depth decreases. So the height of these waves, uh, so the depth of the water decreases. So as the depth of the water decreases, this pattern tends to become flatter and flatter. So this shape kind of become flatter and flatter as you go towards the coast. Towards the coast when you reach, what happens is, since these waves become closer and closer, the height increases drastically. And when the height of the waves increases, it finally leads to breaking of the waves. So if there is a coast here, what would happen is, the water is becoming shallower, it is becoming less deeper. So the molecules that are moving are becoming, uh, are kind of having a flatter path as compared to the molecules that are moving in deeper oceans. But what is basically happening here is, the height of the wave increases as the waves are coming closer. So you have increase in the height of waves and finally at the coast they kind of break down. And this is known as breaking of the waves. Now there are waves which are of different kinds. The first wave that we talk about is swells. These are the normal um, ripples that we can see in the ocean and it's a kind of mature undulating feature that is present over the huge parts of the ocean surface. The second we can talk about is, let's say tsunamis. So tsunamis are severe waves that are basically caused by three factors. It can be either earthquake within the water, you can have volcano within the water or it can be due to a landslide underwater. Okay. So these are some of the three primary factors that are caused for tsunamis or the waves that are kind of much more devastating in nature. So these are the two types of waves that we usually talk about and any of the wave which is coming to the coast gets collided with the coast and when it is touching the coast it is ought to form some features on the coast. They can be in form of depositional features or erosional features which we would be covering under the section on geomorphology in a separate class. Now what is happening here is these waves that we are talking about are going kind of perpendicular to the coast. So this is the coast and the waves are coming perpendicular to the coast. Now when they are coming perpendicular to the coast they kind of break to the coast and when they are breaking to the coast there are kind of three types of patterns that can be formed. The first and the most common pattern is spelling breakers. This is usually formed when you have a kind of flat bottom or a very um, minute slope. So these waves which are coming here they kind of they tend to roll down. So as soon as they reach the ocean body, they kind of roll down and collapse. The next is plunging breakers. Then in these breaking waves, you have kind of steep, steep bottom. So the surface it is touching has a steep bottom. Okay. And when the waves come out, the last wave as you can see here, it kind of collapses downwards. So that's the pattern. It, it goes and it finally collapses down. 
that happens when there is a steep bottom. And the last is the surging breakers. Surging breakers occur in the coastline which is very very steep. Common in California coast. What happens here is the particle comes out and kind of breaks down or rolls down at the end. So that is what is known as surging breakers. So important thing to know here is the order of the waves. So spinning breakers occur in a very flat bottom surfaces. Then you have plunging breakers that occur in kind of little steep bottom surfaces and finally the surging breakers that occur in a very steep bottom surface. Now we have already talked about the waves and its types. The other thing we would be talking about today is the currents. Now currents are the forces which are affected by say waves or winds. Okay, And what happens here is under currents we would be talking about various currents as we already did in the previous class. So you have warm currents which run from the equator towards the pole. Then you have cold currents running from the pole towards the equator. These were the basic currents that we have talked about which are influenced by wind, gravity and friction and other forces. Now, there is a term known as Gaia. So this is a kind of rotation that occurs in the various uh, ocean surfaces and what is important to know here is this Gaia or the rotation of the waves, uh, the current is towards this side in the north hemisphere and this side in the sorry, this side in the south hemisphere. So I can say it is clockwise for north hemisphere and it is anti-clockwise for south hemisphere. So that is how the ocean currents takes place. Now among the ocean currents, there are some currents which are predominantly found in the coastal regions. They are two, uh, there are two types of such currents. First is the longshore current and the next important here is a rip current. So let's first talk about longshore currents. What we studied till now was the waves are something uh, that are moving perpendicular to the uh, to the coastline, but longshore current is a unique feature that runs parallel to the coast. So if I say this is my coastline, this is my coast. Okay. So longshore current would be something which would be running parallel to the coast. Okay. You will have the waves coming in from the sea. These waves will bring the particle in and that is known as swash and then finally when the waves recede the particle will, will go out and that would be known as back swish. And this would be the path of the longshore current. Now when there is a current which is flowing but when, uh, parallel to the coast it mainly aims to kind of straighten the coastline and in this process it brings about lot of sands and sediments which uh, kind of deposit here and they are known as longshore drifts. So if I move on to the next slide here, you will have a diagram, an animation here which is a kind of coastline and just observe this sand particle. Now as the wave comes in, this sand particle would slowly and gradually kind of uh, get pushed with the wave and it would reach the coast here. Now as these waves recede, it would move straight out here and finally when the wave comes, it would go back and front and back and front. So this would be the movement of particle or the sand particle. Now an interesting example is if you are kind of playing a ball what would happen here is the ball would be on the coast or the beach line and finally there would be a similar movement of the ball and it would change its location in a given time. 
So this movement where it gets towards the beach is known as swash and when it retreats towards the ocean in a kind of perpendicular fashion this is known as back swash. And this swash and back swash kind of brings in sands and sediments which are deposited along the coastal structures and these deposits lead to future formation of beaches or other depositional structures like tumblers etc which we would be discussing in the class on geomorphology where we would be talking about coastal landforms. So this is how a current that is flowing parallel to the beach or the parallel to the ocean, uh, coast affects the movement of the particles and it is known as longshore current. This current brings in sands and sediments which are known as longshore drift and this is also known as beach drift. Now finally we would be talking about wreck. So when there are longshore currents moving into the, uh, moving parallel to the coast, in some cases what happens is there would be case where there are two longshore currents that are coming uh, towards one another and those zones kind of become dangerous for swimmers because the, those zones are the zones of rip currents. Now for to understand rip current, I am using a video. So that is a video from um, channel 79, channel 7 news. Under this video, what I am trying to do is, I am trying to explain the uh, how the drip current basically comes into existence. So as you can see, this is the ocean body and what the person does here is, he uses dye or a color to explain how there would be a drip, drip current. Now in this ocean what is happening is, there are swimmers who are swimming and finally, there is a dye that has been put up here and as you can see there are ocean currents that are flowing and this dye goes deeper into the ocean and moves backwards. So all the region that you can see is in black is the dye that you can see and that creates a kind of rip pattern. So here is Here is the rip current. So with the dye, you can see there are water coming up and there is a channel through which the water is moving back. If the swimmer is struck in this zone, he is tend to go down into the ocean within the currents. So what is advised usually for the swimmers is to go parallel to the coast rather than going in the direction of the rip current, go parallel to the coast and then follow the direction of the waves towards the shore to get rid out of the rip current. So these were the two important currents that we have discussed today and the characteristics and the functions of waves. We would be covering tides in the next class. So you can subscribe to exam based channel.